another video on landing performance, which was requested by one of our subscribers. This is actually an extract from our new CheckRide Prep software for the private pilot, which guides you through the steps of passing your private pilot oral and flight exams. All the tricks, tips, and know-hows of 15 years experience giving flight exams condensed in a little over two hours of interactive training. But on with the question. As you'll probably know, the landing distance of an airplane is dictated by several factors, such as airplane weight and speed, air temperature and pressure, wind conditions, etc. Let's first see how these factors affect performance and then tackle a problem using math and graphic methods. It's pretty obvious that a lighter airplane will need less runway than a heavy airplane when landing at the same speed. The same applies to a car or truck as you can see. So I don't think we should waste any time on this concept. The speed also obviously affects landing distance. The faster the aircraft, the longer the runway needed. But this concept is negligible, as you should always land at the same indicated airspeed, no matter the temperature, pressure, or elevation of the field. The only time you should increase the approach and landing speed is if wind shear is reported at the landing airport. As a rule of thumb, you should increase the speed by half the reported maximum gust. So for example, if the wind shear is reported at 20 gusting to 30 knots, you should increase your speed by 15 knots. When it comes to pressure, the result might be less evident. The higher the pressure, the less distance is required. Think of air molecules as tiny little brakes. The more the molecules, the more brakes you have. So the higher the pressure, the more braking action on the aircraft. This braking action is probably known to you as drag. For the temperature, the concept is similar. The hotter it is, the more these little brakes we talked about are spread apart. The colder, the more they are concentrated. Also, the hotter it is, the higher your true airspeed. So if you're flying at the same indicated airspeed in cold air as when in hot air, your speed is actually greater when it's hot. And the faster you go, the more runway you need, as already mentioned. Finally, the wind affects the landing distance in a fairly obvious way. If you're landing at 65 knots and the wind is a 10 knot headwind, your actual ground speed is only 55 knots because 10 knots of wind are already entering the pitot tube and another 55 are given by the forward motion of the airplane. Usually, you will decrease the landing distance by 7-10% to for each 10-15 knots of headwind and increase the distance by 10% for each 3-4 knots of tailwind. But to make sense of all that we discussed, let's tackle an actual problem with the landing charts. Now for the actual calculations part, you will need a POH, a pilot operating handbook. If you don't have one, don't despair. Most POHs can be found online for free. Just type in a Google search, for example, SR22 POH PDF, and you will find it on the first page. It's important to also type in PDF to avoid getting a bunch of garbage. Once you downloaded the correct POH, you will find the landing data, usually in section 5 or 6. It will be in two different formats. The first one we will discuss is the math method used by Cessna, Cirrus, etc. And then we will discuss the graphic method used by other manufacturers such as Piper. So let's say we need to determine the total landing distance on a dry grass runway located at 1250 feet above the sea with a pressure of 28.59, a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade and a headwind of 7 knots. And by the way, our airplane weighs 3,400 pounds. We will pull out the appropriate landing data sheet and start by converting the 1250 feet elevation into a pressure altitude. For this you can either use the manual or electronic key 6B, your flight computer, or calculate it manually by subtracting 28.59 from the standard pressure of 2992, multiplying the result by 1000, and because the pressure is low, we're actually going to add it to 1250 and we'll find the final pressure altitude of 2,500 feet. By the way, if you want to see how to calculate pressure altitude, you can watch either the RE6B video or our true altitude video. Now that we have the pressure altitude, we can move on to the chart where we will need to interpolate between four numbers to get our initial distance. We will use the 2,000 and 3,000 feet rows, as 2,500 feet lies in the middle, 
and also the 20 and 30 degree columns. Because again, 25 lies in the middle. To find our number, all we need to do is add the four numbers we found together, and then divide them by four, for a final answer of about 2,563 feet. But we're not done yet. The final step is to look at the note, which tells us to subtract 10% for each 13 knots of headwind, and add 20% for landing on a grass runway, which is what we're doing. Because we have only 7 knots, that's about half of 13, we will decrease the distance by 5% and increase it by 20%. So we can just increase the distance by 15%. The easiest way to do this is to multiply 2,563 by 1.15 to find the final landing distance of approximately 2,947. Now, if this is for the written test, you need to be as precise as possible. But for real life, I would pick a distance of 3,000 feet or even greater. You should always round up because of several factors. First of all, safety. And second, you know, the airplane that you're flying is probably not a brand new airplane, and as age goes on, performance decreases. And finally next, let's see the graphic method. For the graphic method, again, you'll need a POH. For example, a Piper Warrior. And it's actually easier, as there are no calculations involved. Let's take the data from the last slide and just change the weight. Let's say the airplane weighs 2,400 pounds, and this time we're landing on a hard surface instead of a grass runway. Again, we need to calculate the pressure altitude and find 2,500 feet like we did before. Then it's just a matter of drawing a series of lines. We start from the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and draw straight up to intercept 2,500 feet pressure altitude, then straight across until we reach the weight line. From there, we will parallel the weight lines down until we reach our weight of 2,400 pounds. Straight across again until we hit the wind line, parallel the wind lines down until we hit the 7 knot mark, and finally straight across to discover a total landing distance of about 1,340 feet. And voila, there is your answer. Again, if the question is part of an FA knowledge test, extreme precision is required, and it would be wise to repeat the whole process again and again to make sure the result is consistent. If we're just calculating it for ourselves, then I would suggest increasing the distance to 1400 feet to stay on the safe side. And by the way, we are adding a contest on our website for aviation questions that we will answer as usual with a video. And once a month, we will reward the best question with a free all-in-one package, and that's a $125 value. Details will come in the next video, in a day or so. For more information on our software, please call us toll-free at 1-855-PASS-FA. That's 1-855-727-7322. Or visit us at...